Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm going to be attempting a vintage model train restoration. <laughs> Recently I started a new series of salvage or scrap and the first episode is out already if you want to check it out. Now salvage or scrap, I think these are really entertaining to watch because of the time limit and all of the chaos that that causes. But in terms of me actually doing these things, it's not that much fun because I have to rush, obviously it's really stressful, and I find that I'm not able to do that good a job because of the time limits. So today I thought it would be really nice to do a restoration project where I can take my time, there's no time limit, and hopefully I can do some better quality work essentially. So I've picked up a loco and it is this. This is a Triang Davy Crockett locomotive, which was produced between 1962 and 1967, and it's an incredibly rare and collectible loco. When they're in good condition and they've got a box and such, these can go for £100 or more. But this one does not have a box and it's not in great condition, and I got it cheap. I got it, in fact, for less than 60 quid. And it occurred to me, because of the loco builds that I've done, I've probably got all of the skills and tools that I need to basically restore this so that it's as good as new, or pretty close to as good as new. So that's today's job. Let's start by taking a closer look then at some of the loco's issues. First of all, the wheels are really bothering me. I don't know whether Triang would have painted the wheels these badly originally, or whether somebody's gone back and tried to touch them up. But yeah, the yellow painting looks messy, and the plastic insulators around the axles, they look really messed up as well. The paintwork on the body isn't great either. I don't know whether some of it is just dirt, but in other places there's definitely some paint chipped off, so that needs looking at. The bodywork itself is very dirty. The real brasswork on the loco is tarnished. That doesn't look great. And the biggest issue with this is that it's completely missing its cow catcher. Although that's not entirely true because this did come with a cow catcher. The only problem is this is all that's left with it. When I got it, it was split in half and the previous owner had tried to glue it back together. And as I've been inspecting the part, it's broken up even more. So this is what I'm going to focus on to start with. And of course, my solution to the cow catcher problem is to 3D print a new one. So I've measured what's left of the old cow catcher and come up with this design. Now, this was a fantastic object to work on. Such an interesting shape, such an interesting design, a real fun challenge to recreate this on the computer and also to slightly tweak it so that it is more optimized for 3D printing. So the design is ready, let's get this printed. And there is the final cow catcher. I've taken the liberty already of sanding it down and then applying some primer to it. But yeah, through the magic that is 3D printing, I've managed to create a very convincing looking Triang cow catcher. Yeah, amazing how well this is printed. So I can paint that later on and hopefully that will fit. First things first then, I'm gonna disassemble the loco as much as I possibly can so that I can take the bodies downstairs for a good wash. So I'm hoping all these brass parts will come off quite easily. Yeah, so we've got the bell, I'll polish that up. All this brass work should come up really nicely once it's polished. Little dome thing, that's off. There's a screw under there. I was wondering how the body came off this thing. Now I know there's a hidden screw. That's good. And then there's this big sort of dome here. Yeah, that's coming. Yeah, okay, that's off as well. Great. So I think if I undo this screw, I should be able to get the body to come off. Yep, yep, it's coming loose. Maybe a little more on the screw. Yep, yep, okay. And finally, the body is off. Excellent. And uh, I'm going to do a full disassembly of this chassis in just a second because I want to even get the wheels off it so that I can repaint them. Obviously, that's quite a dangerous thing to do, but you know, I want to do the full job, even if it means taking a few risks. And I've got time to try and get things right, so I'm not too scared. Right, tender body off. 
Yeah, what I might do then is take the axles out of this because they're inclined to rust. That way I can clean this chassis as well with soap and water without risking rusting the axles solid. So let's try that. So this part can go downstairs for a thorough cleaning, I think. So can the tender body, which by the way, doesn't look too bad at all. I'm hoping to get away without repainting this if possible. And then of course the loco body. In fact, you can see what color of red this is supposed to be. Look at that. The rest of the body is sort of darkened with dirt. I'm hoping that a full repaint will not be necessary here, but it all depends how much of this dirt I can shift. So let's get this downstairs. Let's see if I can clean it up. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing the old faithful soap on a toothbrush trick, except this time I've got a lot more time to be thorough. So I'm gonna do several passes of this until it seems to me that there's no more dirt coming off. So I'm gonna be as thorough as possible. I can see that the foam created by the soap has gone a kind of brownie color, which suggests that this is doing some good. Hopefully it is. All right, I would say that will pretty much do it for the first pass. So I'm going to rinse this off. Yeah, already you can tell how much better that's looking, but I'm gonna go straight in and do another pass. Yeah, well, still coming off dirty, still seeing lots and lots of dirt coming off this thing. All right, well, I'm gonna try dabbing that dry and the ultimate test will be how this looks when it is dry, because at the moment it looks amazing. I'm just gonna dab this dry and then let, let it air dry the rest of the way. Okay, well, we'll see how that gets on. For now, let's move on to the tender. Yeah, looks good, looks really good. I'm loving the red on this. Very, very vibrant. And the full extent of this red probably hasn't been seen for years on this model because it's just so dirty. Okay. Well, that should do. doesn't need to be uh, too thorough, this one, because there's no paint on it. It's just black, so shouldn't show up any of the dirt anyway, but I'm satisfied now that the majority of the dirt is now off this thing, so that's good. Let's get them all back upstairs, and let's move on with the disassembly of the chassis. So now I've got the bodies and the tender chassis drying in front of a gentle fan, and that should just make sure that they are dried thoroughly and quite quickly, so that hopefully the remaining metal parts that I haven't taken off won't rust over. I think we should be okay on that. So next I'm gonna look at polishing the various parts that need to be polished. So obviously that's gonna be all of the brass work. I'm also going to polish the wheels before I take them out of the chassis because that will let them spin nice and freely. And I'm also gonna do the coupling, connecting rods, that kind of stuff. So let's get started with a bit of a disassembly. I'm gonna take the motor out and once I've got a dull moment, I'm going to fully service the motor and I'm also gonna fully check the motor so that I know what condition it's in. And then if I need to, I will swap it for a better motor or uh, obviously just fully service it so that it works as it should. But um, that won't be a problem. I've got loads of these motors, so I'll put that to one side. Okay, now let's take the coupling and connecting rods apart. So it's just this one single screw, one single crank pin and they come apart and it's just a screw and a washer that I need to keep safe. Then the slider assembly comes out and so should the coupling rod. There we go. And the same on the other side. Right, that looks excellent. So before I knock the wheels out of this thing, which is a terrifying job, don't do it very often, but I am on this occasion, uh, let's polish up the wheels. And for that, I need my goggles. looks good. I have to say, the some of the axles, except the centre one, very, very stiff. So I'm glad I'm actually taking those out so that I can service those up. All right, let's clean these wheels. Oh yes, look at that. Very dirty. 
There's something deeply, deeply satisfying. There's something deeply, deeply satisfying about cleaning filthy wheels. I spend half of my time cleaning wheels that are not really that dirty, but I think, you know, it's been long enough. They need their wheels cleaning. A loco like this, when the wheels haven't been cleaned for decades, you know, more than likely since before I was born. Yeah, there's something a bit more pleasant about that. So I'll knock those wheels out in a second. In fact, let's take the base keeper plate off just so that that's out of the way. And while we're at it, let's get the front pony truck off as well, because that is what the cow catcher has to attach to. So I'll have to do that separately as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave the chassis to one side now until it's time to, well, until I'm feeling brave enough to punch those axles out of it. Let's clean up these rods by hand and then I'll polish them. Well, the by hand bit isn't going ever so well because they are really quite dirty. So I might forego this and move straight on to the power polish. Right, let's do that. Okay, so that's the rods, I think, looking good. Now I've got my favorite part, or what I think is gonna be my favorite part, the polishing up of the little brass details. I think we're gonna see the biggest transformation with these bits, so let's try. Wow, wow, look at this thing. It looks awesome, it's kind of, warm actually oh, that's worrying um needs a little bit more here and there on it but that is just a transformation yeah yeah that's good right let's do the bell because that should be an easy one there you go i do like a glistening bell that's for sure All right, so basically I have the model railway equivalent of the crown jewels here. They are really looking good. Okay, time to move on. I think that's polishing done. And now the part that I am not looking forward to. I'm going to knock the wheels out of the chassis. I always used to be too scared to do this because there's little plastic insulators on one side and they go between the axle and the wheel and those would perish and the act of taking these wheels out of these chassis was usually enough to completely destroy those plastic spaces and therefore the loco would be ruined. These days I don't care what happens to them because of course I got a 3D printer, I can just make some new ones. So I'm going to try and knock these axles through and then I'll create some new plastic insulators so that it doesn't matter what happens. Oh, 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 yeah, it's gone. One axle out, and look at all that filth on it. Cool. Yep, so they're going to get a thorough cleaning, thorough cleansing. Let's move across. Um, not sure how I'm going to do this centre axle, actually, because I don't want to take the driving gear off. I've still not got a smart way of putting that back on. But I want to try and at least get this wheel off, and then what I'll do with that one is another matter. They also want to paint these wheels, obviously. There we are. That's as far as I can push it now without pushing the gear out. It's coming. It's going to destroy that insulator, though, because it's wibbling and wobbling. But that I don't care about. That I can live with. Come on. There we go. It's out of there. Yeah, and that plastic insulator look, all cracked and ruined, so these need replacing anyway. I think it's going to be harder to knock the last one out because I've got to avoid the stupid rods. There we are, rod has come out. That's a good solution. Okay, I am going to have to take these rods out too. All right. Excellent. There we go, bare chassis, look at that. So all of this can now be cleaned and restored. 
So next up, I want to try and get the paint off these wheels so that I can repaint them. So I'm going to soak them in some sort of paint remover. But first, I need to try and get the plastic insulators out. They've all crumbled, but they're still kind of stuck in there. So I'm going to try and melt them out with my soldering iron, if possible. And we'll see if that's going to be something that works. We'll see. Ugh. Yeah, it's quite noxious. Maybe that wasn't the best idea. Oh, well, no, but it worked, though. It did work. All right. That's what a triangle wheel looks like without its insulator on. Very nice. All right, a couple more of those to go. This one on the centre axle looks really broken up, but again, it's just, it's just collapsed entirely. There we go. I might keep one of these just in case I do have to remeasure one uh, for another 3D printed part, but um, I'm hoping that trying were efficient, and I think they were, and they used the same ones for all of their locos, because if they did, then I've already got a design that will work. And then, of course, the other two are on axles, and I really want to clean these axles, so let's do that, because there's hair and years and years of gunk on these, which is obviously quite disgusting, so let's clean it off. There, that's looking a lot better. And then what I'm going to do is I've got my container, and some spirit. This is safer spirit, apparently, so it shouldn't gas me. I'm just going to soak them. I don't know what to do about the wheel I wasn't able to remove from the model. Not sure about that yet. But let's put these to soak and see how it goes. And if this stuff is good at removing this paint, might not be, uh, then I'll use it on the remaining axle. But let's put that to one side. For now, though, let's have a go at cleaning the chassis. Try and get all of the dirt off this. Right, let's clean out where the axles run through the chassis. It always frustrates me that I can't ever do this properly while the axles are in, so this is a, a bucket list activity for me, big time. Look at that, right into the bearing there, clean it right out. Right, time to get messy. I'm gonna clean out the teeth of this worm drive. Right, that chassis looks pretty clean. I think then I'll do the same thing to the motor. Right, let's start by cleaning that worm drive. You see, I normally don't even bother to clean the worm drive, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go as thorough as I possibly can do. Right, and let's start cleaning up the motor. Right, how's the magnet? The magnet is all but dead, so that will need to be recharged. I can do that, that will really help it out. For now though, let's polish up the parts of this motor that need to be polished. Excellent, so that's all of the brush and motor contacts cleaned. I'm now going to try and clean the commutator in the same way. Job done, right. Clean with the cotton bud and then I can start to really put this motor back together. So now it's time to find out whether this motor is any good. If the coils are burnt out, obviously we'll just want to change the motor. That one's seven ohms. That one's seven ohms. That one's seven ohms. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a fully working motor. Great. Lubricate, reassemble. Let's do it. Let's clean up the brushes. Make sure they're conducting nicely. They should be. A little bit worn, these brushes, but a worn brush often performs better than a brand new one because it's, it's really fitted to the shape of the commutator, so not bothered about that, really. Right. Okay, let's find out whether this motor is going to work. Should do. All the readings point to it being a good motor. Yeah, sounds absolutely marvellous, that. Reverse. Okay, so that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds absolutely fine. Let's put that to one side then and see if I've managed to get any of that paint off those wheels. Let's find out. Is the paint coming loose? 
Mm, starting to, yeah, it's starting to come off. I might be able to maybe scale it off with my wire wheel. Oh, this is gonna get grubby, isn't it? Yeah, but it's coming off. Right, I think this might be an outdoor job. So I'm gonna take these outside, I'm gonna scrub them off, and then I'll come back and show you the results. I might need to just grind it off with the wire wheel now that it's softened, but we'll see. Right, so things are looking pretty good. I've actually managed to get them spotlessly clean. All the paint is off. Still got some paint in the gaps, but I'm not too worried about that. As long as the main surface is clean, that's okay. The paint remover did most of it, but I had to use the wire wheel in the end to get the rest off, and that's what I did to the axle still fitted to the loco. So the plan is in part two that I'm gonna paint these. And the way I'm gonna do it is with the airbrush, and I've created these with the 3D printer, and the wheels fit into those. I'll tape the bottom of the wheel on, and then I'll be able to accurately just paint the section of the wheel that I want to, and hopefully that will work well. But before I can move on and do that, I need to create some of those plastic insulators that I destroyed and threw in the bin. I've got a design already, but I need to print it and check whether it's gonna fit into these wheels. So let's do that now. Okay, so we're looking at quite a quick turnaround for these pieces, about six minutes, something like that. So it shouldn't be too long. And then if they do fit, I can insert these little insulators back into the wheels and then I can paint the wheels while these are fitted and then we'll get the yellow color on those hopefully too. Okay, looks like the parts have finished. So all I need to do now is get them off the bed and pop them into some of those wheels just to check that they are going to fit. Okay, so let's just select this one at random and see if it fits. Now, obviously these pieces have got to be tight fits, but they've got to actually fit as well. So let's see. Is it going to go in there? I would say yes, it's going to with a little bit of coaxing. And by coaxing, I mean forcing with the vise. So I should be able to just push this together. Yeah, that's gone in nicely. Oh man, yes, brand new insulators made of PLA plus, so very, very strong and the perfect fit. So I'll do all of these and then we'll move on. So now I have a collection of parts that is looking a lot better than it was to start with. Some of them have been polished up so that they shine, and those that need it are now ready to be painted. And that is going to occur in part two. So stay tuned, and hopefully I will be finishing off this project pretty soon. So far though, it's been really satisfying. I've really enjoyed just taking this loco completely to pieces, even down to its axles and wheels, and basically gutting it and starting again with it. So join me again soon, and hopefully I'll be able to make this Davy Crockett loco as good as new. Thanks for watching, folks. See you soon.